Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to keep on working with matrices and transformations. So I, I put some references and some example code in this folder. Now, that one old thing I showed you the other day is really very good. Okay. So and it's in this folder, okay. this geometry for computer graphics. I mean, you only need to read about half of it. The other half's really out of date. But the, the, this, the first, these first two chapters, I think, are really nice. Up to, uh, it was up to this page here, just first 20 pages. So out of, the, out of 56 pages in this, you only read like 20. Okay, but it's, it's actually one of the better, I think it's one of the better explanations I've found anywhere about this stuff. And then if you wanna see what I mean by not so great explanations, I, here is a, one of the books on Joggle. The guy who wrote the book has transformations, a chapter on transformations, and he wrote it two times. And it's kind of, I, these are from the books that the library has available to us. So for example, this book, if you're on campus, you can download the whole book, but we're only interested in this chapter on transformations, which is chapter two of the book. So I put that in this folder so you don't have to download it. Okay, now the chapter is kind of long. It's 80 pages. Now, here is the same chapter from a different book he wrote. without the code and it's much shorter. So what essentially is the long version's got code. So it's got these long code examples, which is useful, you joggle code examples. But if you wanna read just the ideas, it's kind of, it's kind of weird that he wrote it twice what, in two different books. One version without any code just explains the idea and the other version with the code. And the code makes it about twice as long. So the 80 page one has the code examples. The 40 page one is, is not a bad explanation of, of transformations. And there's the robot arm example we'll, we'll get up to. We won't get to today, but there's that robot arm example with the shoulder, elbow, wrist, you know, the, uh, the idea of a robot arm. So here he, he discusses the idea of the robot arm. So it's a pretty good explanation of stuff. Okay. So, uh, and then, you know, the robot arm is already on page 10. So most of what we need is on the first 10 or 15 pages of this. Okay, this is without code examples though. The long one has the same explanation, but then interspersed with the explanation are, are joggle code examples, okay? So when you get to the robot arm, I don't remember if the code is after, oh yeah, two, here's the 2D robot arm code. Okay, so you know, he's, he's got the code in there. I think you can download his code from his website. I'll look, actually, if, if I can find his code, I'll, I'll put it in there also so that the code is there. So you don't have to, you know, you can always copy and paste it, but it's, it'd be nice to just actually have the code itself. I'll see if, if he's got the code up on his website. Okay, so that's another explanation. Okay. And, uh, you know, with and without code. Now, here's another explanation, a third one. Okay, there's the one we were looking at yesterday. There's this one that's done twice. And there's a guy who, uh, uh, there's a really well-known guy in computer graphics, and his name is uh, Lee Stemakowski. Okay, he's very well-known. And he wrote an open source textbook on Python OpenGL programming. So there's the book, you can download it for free. It's a nice book. And it's got a chapter on, well, it's got a chapter on transformations. Yeah, I've already downloaded it. There's this chapter on transformations. Again, I think it's pretty good explanation. The code is written in Python. The ideas are mathematics. So the ideas are, it's open G. So the, math, the ideas are mathematics. That doesn't matter what language you're using. The underlying gra graphics is OpenGL. The only difference is it's the, the OpenGL code is written with, with Python wrapped around it, not Java wrapped around it. And actually, you notice there's not even that much. Most of what he's talking about is the ideas. Okay, see, so there's no code examples here at all. It's all just uh, graphics and mathematics, graphics and mathematics. You don't even get into any code until you get halfway through this chapter. 
or more. Notice that there's, well, actually, he's, he's got almost no code in this chapter. There's, there's a little bit of code at the, very, at the very end. Okay, so most of the explanation is without even any code. The reason these books have such mo so much ex talk about matrices and transformation is it's the heart of computer graphics. Yeah, you really don't do any computer graphics without matrices and transformations. You, otherwise, you're just drawing still pictures. I mean, if you're doing illustration, you don't need matrices. And a lot of graphics people just draw a picture. Magazines, websites, you know, a lot of graphics, what people call graphics is pictures. But if you're actually making movies or animations, the only way to get things to move is with transformations. So games and any kind of movie, any kind of animation is going to be all done with transformations. So there's a lot to say about these. So here, so now you got... Uh, three references. The truth is this one here, if you read it really carefully, pretty much has everything, almost everything we need is just in this one. Right? And the other ones are, are good if you want to, you know, it's always good to read more than one explanation of an idea. If an idea is important, you really ought to read more than one person's explanation of it. I think maybe the Python one is probably a, a, a good one. Actually, and the other one, the Java one is also not bad. And then in this folder, I just put, uh, these are just, uh, I don't know what to call them. They're just one page each. Like, well, this one derives the rotation matrix. This one shows you the mathematical way to derive this two by two matrix rotation. Okay, so this is just three pages long and it, it's, it's a nice explanation of how you get that formula for rotation from this picture. Here's the picture. I want to rotate X, Y to X prime, Y prime. So give, if you give me this point, I want to rotate around the origin to that point there. That's just the key idea. How do you, if you can rotate one point, you can rotate any geometric shape. And remember, you're always rotating about the origin. So he wants to derive these formulas and then show you how to make them into a matrix. The derivations on this page. So he wants to derive these formulas. Here's the, he derives them on this page and then he write, shows you you can rewrite them as a matrix. We want, it, yeah, I won't go over the details of that, but that's what this three page thing does. Then this one just reminds you, these are what the 2D made using homogeneous coordinates. This is what translation looks like. This is what scaling looks like. This is what rotation looks like. And we don't use shear, okay? But that's what the basic transformations look like. Yeah, you're, you're translating by delta X and delta Y, left and right, up and down. You're scaling by lambda x or lambda y. So that's stretching and scaling this way. This one's stretching and scaling this way. And you're rotating by the angle theta. Okay, so there's the three, three matrices. And this is using homogeneous coordinates so that you can get the translate. Remember we said that if you use a two by two matrix, you can't do translation. So you've got to leap into the third dimension to get two dimensional translations. And then the next thing is the equivalent matrices in 3D. Okay, translation by X, Y, and Z. Well, he, reflection, this negative one just takes something and flips it over. Okay, yeah, that, that's not really all that deep. I mean, he doesn't need to put that in here, but if you, if you take the identity matrix and put a negative one in front of there, then you're flipping things. So if you put the negative one there, you're flipping things. Well, this one will flip things horizontally in the X direction. This will flip things vertically in the y, in the y direction. And this one will flip things from front to back. You put a negative one here and something that's in front flips around to the back and something in the back flips around to the front. So these are, they're called reflections. So there's really three of them because you can put the minus sign there, there, or there, okay? And then there's three rotations now. Rotation around X, rotation around Y, and rotation around Z. And that's cheating. There's really an infinite number of rotations. There's rotating around this axis. You, know, you don't have to just rotate around this, this, and this, but it's complicated to rotate around arbitrary axes. So we cheat and try to use X, Y, and Z as much as possible. A lot of stuff can be done with just using the X, Y, Z rotations. And it, like, if you need to model the earth spinning on its orbit, like if you're doing some kind of simulation, you can't, you, then you really have to find out how to rotate around an arbitrary vector. So you have the axis of rotation and then the end. This is the angle of rotation. And here you only have three axes. You can either use the vertical axis, the, the axis pointing out of the screen or the horizontal axis. 
you want to use an arbitrary axis, like the Earth rotates around the, the, its axis, then you have to use a different matrix, a much, much more complicated matrix. Okay. And actually, I don't think it's, uh, I can't remember if I, oh, I should have put it in there. I, 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 I do have the, I, I forgot to put it in there. I do have the one page that shows you the arbitrary rotation matrix. It's a, it's a complex, it's a real mess, but the thing is it's built into OpenGL. So you actually don't really need to know it. The formula is actually built into OpenGL, but it's interesting to see the formula takes the whole screen. The formula for an arbitrary 3D rotation pretty much takes up the whole screen to write it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember when I get home to put that in there, a copy of the, the, the full blown 3D rotation matrix. Okay. All right. So there's the background stuff. Yeah. This just summarizes the matrices. This explains the ideas. And then in here, it's going to be a little bit of code. So let's look at a, an example of some code now. Okay. So here is a real basic example. So let's go through this. Well, first, let me just show you what it does. Well, no, I, actually, I think we need to explain it to, show, to see what it does. We should explain it first. So we, every OpenGL program is going to need an init function that initializes everything, a draw, a display function that does the scene, yeah, that draws the frames. This is going to be an animation. So this is going to uh, request a new picture every 60th of a second. Okay, so this guy's going to be called every 60th of a second. It's an animation because I included the animator class. And in the uh, constructor of the function, I start the animation. So here's, it's just two lines of code. This starts up an animation that on our drawable surface that draws a frame every tw 24 times a second. So I, I, I set it for not 60 times a second, 24 times a second. So it, it runs, so it's gonna call the display method every 24th of a second for us. Okay, so if you don't include those two lines, you just get one call to display and that's it. Unless you have some GUI element like mouse buttons or something like that. But if you don't have, if, if, if you just, if you don't have any GUI elements, this is a way to make a movie, okay? Now what it is is the Java, well, these classes will call display for us. Instead of like when we click a button and we call display like in your homework assignment, you, you call repaint when somebody clicks a button. Here, there's no buttons to click. So who's going to call repaint? Now, you know, it's not called repaint anymore. It's in this model, it's called display. Well, we don't have any GUI elements, so we'll let the timer, essentially, we'll let a timer call it. So every 24th of a second, this timer is going to call this for us. As if somebody was clicking a button 24 times a second. It's exactly the same idea. It's as if some imaginary person was clicking a button 24 times a second. Okay. So this is what the, you, 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 can, you can set up the timer anytime you want. Normally you would set it up at the beginning of the program, but I could have a button that turns on the timer and I could have a button that turns off the timer. So if you, you could have a button that starts the animation and another button that stops the animation, that would be a button that turned on the timer. So you could have a button that creates an event that turns on the timer events and another button that turns off the timer events. Right now, I'm just gonna turn on the timer automatically. When the program starts up, the main method, the main method, the last thing it's going to do is start the timer. Okay. So it's, it's going to set things up. It's going to start the timer. Okay. Now the main method builds the GUI, the Java GUI. The main method builds a Java GUI. We're going to use a, a GL panel. Okay. So the GL panel is what the thing that the, the, the graphics are drawn in. So this is gonna draw in the GL panel. This, this guy, this drawable guy is actually our panel, okay? So now what's the initialization do? The initialization is gonna set our clear color. We're gonna have a white background. It's gonna set our drawing color, we're gonna draw in red. Normally you don't just use one color for a whole program, but this is gonna be real simple stuff. So we're gonna use one background color and one foreground color for everything, okay? So we just set those up in initialization. We'll talk about this later on. We're setting the camera. There's got to be something that looks at the scene. In 3D graphics, there's this notion that something is looking at the scene. In 2D graphics, you're just drawing pixels on the screen. Okay, there is nobody, there's no idea that you're setting things up on a table than taking a picture of it. But that's what you're doing in 3D graphics. 
You're essentially setting things on a stage, then stepping back and pointing a camera at them and taking a snapshot. This is setting up the camera. There's a notion in 3D graphics that what you're really doing is you're not manipulating pixels on the screen, you're taking a picture. Yeah, and then the picture shows up on the screen. But the metaphor is that with, when you, in your homework assignment in 2D graphics, the metaphor is you manipulate the pixels. You paint the pixels on the screen. In 3D graphics, that's not the metaphor. In 3D graphics, the metaphor is there's a camera that's taking a picture of a scene. And then what you see on the screen is what the camera sees. Okay, so the camera is painting the pixels. You set the scene, you describe where the camera is, then you essentially say, take a snapshot. You'll, we'll call something I'll call the render. When we call OpenGL, we're essentially saying, take a snapshot. So the metaphor is your code sets up a scene, your code sets up a camera, and then when you wanna take a picture, you tell the camera to snap a picture, and then that picture ends up on the screen. Though the camera paints pixels for us, okay? I mean, that's a completely different metaphor than 2D graphics, where basically everything you do is manipulating pixels on the screen. You draw circles and ellipses and squares and things like that on the screen. You paint the pixels. But we have to talk, well, later on we'll talk about, oh, um, if you look at these readings I was showing you, see, it says transformations and viewing. And see, over here, this is the viewing part. They're very closely related. Transformations and viewing. To me, blurring them together is a bad idea. What they have in common is they both use matrices, but for different purposes. A lot of graphics books blur transformations and viewing together because, well, they both use matrices. That's like saying I can teach you physics and chemistry at the same time because they both use algebra. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Just because they both use algebra doesn't mean that you should blur them together. The transformations and the view and the viewing are pretty deeply separate. They're important ideas, but one is putting things on a table. That's the transformations. The other is setting a camera to take a picture of them. The very different ideas. You know, the camera is very independent of where I put these. And they both use matrices. The camera is represented by a matrix, and the positioning of every object is represented by a matrix but it's still very different. You know, your goal in positioning the objects is very different than your goal in positioning the camera. And, 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 and blurring them together by writing a chapter on transformations and viewing, but half the graphics books in the world do that. When they get to matrices, they, they almost always put it in a chapter on transformations and viewing. Um, this guy didn't do that. Oh, let's see. See, he just wrote about trans. Actually, no, I think he did do it. Let me see. Let me see if he's got the viewing in here or not. He may have stuck. Yeah, he does. See, there's the there's the camera model. See, so he blurs them together too. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he's blur. He didn't put the. He didn't name the chapter transformations and viewing. But then halfway into the chapter, he starts doing viewing. So he's doing the same thing. He's kind of, because they're using matrices, he's going to blur, he's going to do, he'd see, projections, okay? So if it was me, I would break that into two separate chapters and make it very clear that this is a very different idea. We're doing the camera. We're describing what the camera is. We're going to use matrices both times, but for a different purpose, okay? So he also, at some, about the middle of the chapter, or about two thirds of the way in the chapter, he starts talking about viewing, not about transformations. Okay, again, what's in common is matrices. I'll bet this other guy does the same thing too. Oh, yeah, and the, the book I gave you here actually does the same thing also. So if you look at the table of contents, here's where it switches to viewing. Perspective transformations. That's the perspective viewing. What our artists call it perspective. You know, uh, we think of cameras, but before there were cameras, there were painters and painters wanted to paint realistic pictures. So the idea of painting a realistic picture was referred to as perspective. What, you know, getting the, the perspective of the artist and seeing the scene. So it's in, in computer graphics, it's still referred to as the perspective transformation. That's the viewing part here. And then here, transformations in viewing. It, it, this is an old library. 
So this is transformations in viewing in a library that used to exist 20 years ago that doesn't exist anymore. This library got replaced by OpenGL. This library doesn't exist anymore. So he's also blurring transformations with viewing. Almost everybody does. Okay. So later on, we'll say what these lines of code do. Okay. Right now, here's where we really do our, here's where we do our, our we're going to draw, do play around some transformations. Okay. Now, let me comment out that line. What I'm going to do is just rotate by an angle theta. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to draw one triangle. Here's three vertices. And I'm gonna use a little trick here that's actually kind of nice. Let me format this code a little bit better. Here's a nice trick for drawing simple pictures, for experimenting and playing around with graphics. You need some points on the plane. If you're gonna, if you're doing, like this is just 2D graphics. For, for, for the starting out, 2D graphics is good enough for us. You know, you need three points in a plane to get a triangle. Okay. And it'd be nice to draw a variety of shapes, like a triangle, a square, a rectangle. And here's a little trick. The unit circle is made up of all the points that have the coordinates cosine, theta, sine, theta, where theta is this angle here. That's the coordinates of a point on the unit circle. Cosine theta, sine theta. That's that's right out of the calculus book. This is actually real useful. Like suppose I want to draw a triangle. A nice way to draw a triangle is to pick this point here. This point here is 180 degrees, and this point here is 240 degrees, and draw that triangle there. So that would be zero degrees, 120 degrees, 240 degrees. And I get a nice equilateral triangle. Suppose I want a square. I need four points to get a square. Now I could do, for example, this point, this point, this point, and this point, zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and get this diamond shape. Now the way I would do that is I would just see my points here. I just need four, I just see, this is three points, three angles. And then here I write out cosine theta one, sine theta one, cosine theta two, sine theta two, cosine theta three, sine theta three. I, I just pick my three angles and now I got three points on the unit circle. And if I, so it's a real quick way to get a triangle. Now that's gonna give me the triangle zero, 120, And uh, uh, this has to be done in radians though. Now, if you want, you don't have to do this in radians, but then you have to put little conversion factors in there. Or, or you could do it this way. If you don't want to use radians, you would then say, if you want those to be degrees, so this would be, instead of 2.1 radians, this is 120 degrees. I probably should have done it this way. And this one is 240 degrees. Okay. Then just put in here times uh, math dot pi divided by 180, okay? Just throw that in there, okay? okay. There's your three angles. Just leave those there. You're just now you can substitute any three numbers you want in there. You know, pick any three angles you want, and you've got three points on the unit circle as a triangle. Yeah. So that you can draw a triangle that goes from here to here to here, for example. That would be nine degrees, uh, nine degrees, one hundred. Was he two twenty five? Ninety two twenty five. Whatever this one is. Yeah, you can just pick three angles, and and, you get, and if, uh, this die. If I want four, if I get four points with four angles. 90, 90, 0, 90, 180, 270 would give me a diamond. Okay. So it's it's a real cute, it's a it's a convenient way to just plot points on the circle. Oh, for example, suppose you want to draw a nice shape like a pentagram, a pentagram. Like suppose you want to draw that shape there. That's just five points on a circle. You pick five evenly spaced points on the circle. One, two, 
three, four, five. Okay, this is this is V zero, V one, V two, V three, V four. But to get that shape, you just put them in the right order. The order matters. So you go, the order you want would be, what is it? You could start from here and go this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. Yeah, and then you'd get that star line. Or if you went this order, you'd get a pentagram. So if you went in that order, you'd get a five-sided pentagram. But if you went in the order from here to here, to here, to here, to here, then you'd get the star. So you can do real cute things. You can do real clever things this way. Okay, so we use this kind of trick a lot. This declare, here I'm using three points and I can just change those three numbers and I get three different angles there. Notice I don't have to change this down here. I don't have to change this over here. I can just pick those three numbers. And if I wanted five, if I wanted there to be five points, you know, I could just easily put a couple more lines in this. And, you know, now I got five angles, and then I could I could have five points down here, which you can you can have five points down there and comment them out, uncomment them, so you can play around you can play around pretty easily with this stuff. Okay, so that's how my basic idea is going to be for uh, that's going to be my that's going to be my two D shapes. Okay, now right now it's the triangle that goes from here to here to here to here, the equilateral triangle. So a triangle with angles one hundred and twenty degrees. Okay. Now, what do I want to do with that triangle? I want to rotate it. I want to watch that triangle just rotate. Okay. okay. So the triangle centered at the origin anyway. The triangle centered at the origin, and I want to rotate. Now, what we're going to do, and this is not trivial. Here's what we're going to do. Here's that triangle. There's the triangle without the circle left. First, I want to rotate them around the origin. Which is already kind of nice. Then we want to rotate him around this point here. Make him swing around that point there. Make him swing around this point here. Yeah. So, so the triangle is going to rotate like this. Another thing I could do is here, I could take this point of the triangle and have the triangle rotate around the origin, but with this point at the origin. So the triangle would be rotating like this. The triangle would be like this rotating around the origin with that corner at the origin. That's another thing I can do. Okay. So there's a lot of rotations I can do here and it's not obvious how to do them. The simplest is just make this triangle rotate around his or his center. Then rotate that triangle around that point or that point or that point. Then the more tricky thing is take that point, put it over there and rotate the triangle around the origin. And then the, the most sophisticated, the last thing to do is the following. I'm going to take that point of the triangle and rotate the triangle over there. So the triangle is going to be out over here, spinning around that point there. So I'm going to take that point, and I can color code these points so that you know which one. I, I didn't put it in there yet, but what we'll do is we'll make this point red, this point blue, and this point green. Then the triangle will be rainbow, but we know which corner is which. There's going to be one corner is blue, one corner is red, one corner is green. The rest of the triangle will be rainbow shaped, but we can see that we're rotating around the blue corner. Well, you know, we'll put the blue corner of the triangle there and we'll spin it around, or we can put the red corner of the triangle there. Now, actually, let me go ahead and put the colors in there. Now, remember, OpenGL is a state machine. Right now, the foreground color is red. So the first triangle is going to be in red. In fact, I'm going to just get rid of this because you know, there's no point always using red. So then what I'll do down here is I'll say, OK, first triangle is in, first vertex is in red, second vertex is in green, third vertex is in blue. Okay. So, we'll, so now we'll know where, 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 now we'll see the corners because one corner is red, one corner is green, one corner is blue. Okay. And then the rest of the triangle gets filled in with uh, rainbow effect. Okay. 
So, and then when we come back to the top, we need to make sure we start off with, remember we left off here in blue. If we don't set this thing back to red, then the first triangle will be in blue the next time we get back to the top because the OpenGL just remembers what state you're in. So it's in red now and it'll stay in red until we change it. It's in blue now and it'll stay in blue until we change it, if we come back around, okay? Right now, okay, so I've got this triangle. Here's the rotation thing. This is rotating by theta degrees around the axis zero, zero, one. That's the axis zero in the x direction, zero in the y direction, one in the z direction. That's the axis coming out at you. So that's rotating around this axis, which means it's rotating in the plane. So we're rotating in the x, y plane because we're rotating around the z, we're rotating around the z axis. So we're rotating in the x, y plane. Okay, so the axis, the, the, remember this is, this is the x axis, that's i, one, zero, zero. This is the j vector, zero, one, zero. And this is the z vector coming out at you. This is zero, zero, one. That's how 3D graphics works. You hold your hand up like this, and then x, y, and z. In calculus, it's not, it's different. But in, in, in calculus, it's, it's x, uh, x, y, and z. When you take the calculus course, it's x, y, and z. x goes this way. Yeah, X goes this way, Y goes this way, and yeah, Y comes out at you, X goes horizontally, and Z goes up. That's the way it's done in at calculus books. But in graphics, we switch them around, X goes this way, Y goes up, and Z comes out. Okay, so graphics books and, and calculus books don't agree on what these fingers mean. This is called a right-handed coordinate system. That's a left-handed coordinate system. Physicists matter a lot about, because if you rotate a magnet, a rotating magnet generates a magnetic field. Does it generate a North Pole or a South Pole? Well, because of this rule, it generates a North Pole. But if you use this rule, we'd be seeing South Poles. So we live in a world that uses a right-hand coordinate system, not a left-hand coordinate system. But they are, they're separate coordinate systems. Okay, so, so we use the right-hand coordinate system, but we don't agree on who, what to call these. So computer graphics people call them X, Y, and Z. Calculus people call them X, Y, and Z up here. This is the Z axis in calculus. Okay, so we're rotating around the Z axis. So we're rotating this way. So essentially we're rotating in the plane of the projector. We're rotating in this plane here. Okay, that's what we want. In fact, we'll change it. We, even though we're drawing a 2D triangle, there's nothing to stop us from rotating that triangle around the X axis. And what happens then is you see it's flat. You know, the, ro the triangle will rotate out towards us. We'll do that in a second. We'll see that it, it'll see that you know, when, it, when it rotates 90 degrees, you just see a Y. Yeah, because it'll just be looking edge on on a flat triangle. Then, yeah, so you, yeah, it's a 3D graphic system. So we could rotate in three dimensions. Though we, well, right now we're going to stick to rotating in two dimensions for a while. Okay. Now, what's happening here is it's a state machine, right? This rotates by, okay, D theta starts off as two degrees. So D theta, D stands for delta, delta theta. So the theta changes by two degrees. Now, what's happening is that that's a state machine. So I'm rotating by two degrees here. When I get down to the bottom, I'm still rotating by two degrees. When I get back to the top, I'm still rotating by two degrees. When I hit that matrix, now what am I doing? Pardon me? Two on, two. two on two, I'm rotating by four degrees now. Then it's a state machine. It remembers four because it multiplies this matrix by the current matrix. So now you've got a, a rotation by two degrees multiplied by a rotation of two degrees. Actually, we if you go back and look at the, actually, this is actually not obvious. Go back to the rotation matrix. The two dimensional rotation matrix is this, cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cosine theta, okay? Now, suppose, what does it mean to say rotate by one angle then rotate by another angle? People like to use Greek letters when they start talking about angles. So that's rotation by the angle theta. That's rotation by the angle of thought. If you give me a point x, y, 
I'm going to first do this operation, right? So x, y becomes a rotated. But then this guy acts on that guy. So you do the rotation again. So the result is two rotations, first by b, then by pi, theta. So matrix multiplication combines the rotations because this vector becomes a rotated vector. So this is the rotated by phi. But now you hit it with this matrix. So now you get rotated by theta and phi because you took the, matrix, the vector was rotated by phi and you rotated it by theta more. Now, what's really amazing is What does this matrix do? How should you read that? What's this guy here? It's a single value. It's the sum of two angles, right? So it's just a bigger angle. What's this matrix do? Makes rotate side that that combined angle. But we said that this times this does the same thing, right? This times this equals this. And if you do some trig, if you do some trig identities, you multiply out these. You know, now, now do the matrix multiplication. This times this, I can move, I can write it in here. I'll write it in a different color. Because I can do the matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is this number times this number plus this number times this number. Then this number times this number plus this number times this number. So here's what it looks like. The matrix multiplication will be this number, cosine theta, times that number, cosine B, plus, see, this times this plus sine B, sine theta, well, actually it's gonna be minus sine B. So that's this times this. Okay. Now the next number here is this times, this times this plus this times this. So it's cosine theta sine B, cosine theta sine B, sine theta cosine B, plus sine theta cosine B. That's the first row. Now the second row, this times this, so that's gonna be minus sine theta cosine B. This times this, minus cosine theta sine B. Okay, that's the first. Now this corner down here, this times this, so that's minus sine theta sine B plus cosine theta cosine B. That's a trig identity. You look it up on the internet, that trig identity is that one. This is a trig identity. You look it up on the internet, that trig identity is this guy. This is another trig identity. You look it up on the internet, it's this guy. This guy's a fourth trig identity. You look it up on the internet, it's this guy. So this matrix times this matrix, what well, we know what they're doing. This is rotating by one angle followed by rotating by another angle. So it's a rotation of the angles together. But if you do the arithmetic, it gives you this. But we know that the, the combined rotation should be this. This is that angle. You know, that's the sum of the two angles. And then it's a very famous trig identity that says this is this, this is this, this is this, this is this. Now, what we say is that matrix multiplication is just combining the rotation. You know, a few and that's what's happening over here. When I get back to this GL rotate, 
what I'm really doing is I'm taking my past matrix and multiplying it by a new one. So I'm combining it. And then when I hit, when I come back there again, it's saying, do it again. Multiply this matrix. This is a matrix. Multiply this matrix times the current matrix. So that would multiply a third matrix over here, which is it's the same matrix over and over again. But it's going to keep adding the rotation. So this is going to be, each, each image is going to be rotated by two more degrees. So this is rotating around, every, every image is going to rotate with two more degrees. Okay. Now, this should be ready to uh, run. Take this and build it. Oops, oh, um, oh, I misspelled pi. In Java, pi is spelled capital P, capital I. Because it's a constant, so they use the convention that constants always have all caps in their names. Okay. Oh, something's missing. Oh, now it's wrong. It was working at home. Let me, I, you know, I, I, I made some changes. Okay, here, okay, here's the, let me grab the original. See if I, maybe I goof something up. So here's, here's the original. Let's go back to the original. Change the name just like so don't like it. Transformation. Let's see if this works. Okay, I goofed something up because there's your see that, that one's rotating and translating. So it's making it go away from us. So it's shrinking because we're using, and here I'm using a camera. So the idea is when, you know, if you go, if you move away from the camera, you should shrink. And, and, and eventually it goes so far away from the camera, you don't see it anymore. Okay, so it did work. So I goofed something up while, while playing around with it. I goofed something up. Let's see if we can figure out where did I goof up? Okay, so let's see. TextPad's kind of helpful in things like this. I've got two files, one's goofed up and what is it? So ask TextPad to compare them. Let's look at where things changed. Okay, what did I change? Okay, the name of the file is probably not important. This one was drawing always in red. I got rid of that line. This was the line that pushed it back. I don't care about that. Uh, this was the line that was pushing it back. So it was translating in the Z direction, negative Z. So, so I don't want it to go backwards. So, so that dropping that line shouldn't be a big deal. Let's see. I changed thetas from radians to degrees. And I'm pretty sure that's the right formula. Is that, did I get there? Is that the right formula? Math.pi by 180, right? Yeah, that's the right part. Okay, so so I'm, I'm switching from that here. Here they were in radians. So here they're in radians. Now here they're these are degrees, but they're converted to radians. So these are still in radians. Okay. Then I added the color. That shouldn't. I can comment the color out, but I don't think that matters. Let's see. Any. 
I changed the name from transformations to transformation. So that's, ah. well, what do you do in a situation like this? I mean, to me, it looks like the changes don't matter, but, if, but they do matter. So what do I do? Yeah, start reverting, start reverting this one back to this one to see what I made. What did I do? I mean, I, I probably goofed something dumb up, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so this one works, this one doesn't. Let's go back to solid red, okay? Let's go back to solid red. So, and here's the draw in red line. Let's put it back in there. So, Draw in red and comment out our colors down here. Maybe I goofed up the color. Okay, so there's one change. Okay, now it's solid red. Okay, see if that gets, see if that helps. Didn't help. Didn't help. Okay, let's keep, you know, revert back to the thing that works. So one step at a time, let's revert. I mean, this is how I, this is what I, I mean, this is why teaching these courses is a lot of work. I spent a lot of time debugging code, probably as much as time as any of you spent debugging code. I spent all that time debugging code too. Yeah. If you write code, you're going to have to debug it. Unless you're a genius who just writes correct code all the time, and I don't know anybody who does. Yeah. You, if you write code, you spend time debugging it. Um, see, what should I change next, maybe? Go back to the original thetas? Yeah, okay. Um, here were the original thetas. I can put those back in here and comment out these. Okay, so get rid of the, this trick and go back to those thetas. Okay, so now we're back to those thetas. Oh, you're right. I, I may have things. I may be behind the camera because the other one I was I was pushing it. So I may have started behind the camera and moved front. And so maybe, yeah, great. Thanks. I bet that's what it is. I'm probably starting behind the camera. I mean, I could put this to well, put the trend, put that back in and see. Yeah. Now we're going to push it forwards. So if this works, that means we're, we're, we're behind the camera. We're stuck behind the camera. And this is moving us from behind the camera to in front of the camera. Okay, so. Yep, that was it. See, we started behind the camera and then we moved. So let's start, let's, let's get this guy in front of the camera to start with. The camera, the camera is sitting a tenth of a unit away from us. Oh, the camera is sitting at point one and the model sitting at zero in the Z direction. So he's starting out one tenth of a unit behind the camera. So he's starting out, okay, let me get rid of the translation. The problem is these vertices. See, they're starting out Zero, 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 zero. Um, no, those. Oh, I, I'm using 2D vertices, but I'm really doing 3D. When you use a 2D vertex, the third vertex is set to zero for you. So that's putting me behind the camera. Okay. So I can, I can, what I need to do is to fix this, I, I, I should be using 3D vertices. It's really kind of not, it's not such a great idea to be using 2D vertices. So using 3D vertices, now I can set where they are. Now I'm gonna put them in front of the camera. I'm gonna put them in front of the camera by putting them at um, negative 0 0.1. That's actually, well, I'll make it 0 0.2. That's, 
the camera's at negative 0 0.1. Now they're slightly in front of the camera. Negative 0 0.2. Negative 0 0.2. Okay, and let's we'll see, I can put back color. I'm pretty sure now that that's, that was the problem. I can put back these guys because I'm pretty sure they're not the problem. I don't want this, uh, I don't need this guy. It doesn't really do anything. Okay. So now everybody starts off just a little bit in front of the camera, but actually that's too close to the camera. They'll just cover, the, you know, so actually I should push them quite, let me, I should push them maybe even to negative two. Let's push them like two units behind the camera. I'm not sure negative one or negative two would be good. So we don't want to be right behind. Yeah, you know, what happens if somebody's right in front of your camera? It's literally the same idea. You, you know, if you put the camera in somebody's face, they fill up the whole picture. You need to step a little bit away. So this is stepping a little bit away from the camera. And that might be stepping a little bit too much away, but you know, that'll just make the triangle look a bit smaller. Okay, now. You have green decoration upstairs. Pardon me? You have green decoration upstairs. Oh, then I don't want these. Okay. Okay. Oh, and that wasn't too far away from the camera. In fact, I could push him back a little bit more still. He's still kind of filling up the whole screen. So he's still pretty close to the camera. Okay, and you can see there's a blue corner, a red corner, and a green corner. So let's try, let's push them three units away from the camera. That maybe will give us a good view of them. So let's push them three units. Now here's something kind of funny. What if I push him three units, him three, two units, and what's that do? You got this triangle, you know, facing here. What's what's this do here? Negative three, negative two, negative one. Yeah, at a weird angle. Yeah, he's just, he's not gonna look like an isosceles triangle anymore. He's gonna look kind of warped. It'll look like a triangle, but it'll be, it'll, you know, it just puts the corners at different depths from you. So it's a slanted triangle. Okay, I mean, if, you, if you're curious, you can go and see what that looks like. It, it just looks like an odd shaped triangle to us. It's actually the triangle, one of those corners is closer to us, one of those corners is a little bit farther away, and one of those corners is still farther away. We have nothing around it to judge depth by, so we can't tell what's going on. If we, if you, your, your brain can't tell depth if there's nothing around you. If you put somebody in a big empty room, they have a hard time telling how far away things are. You can create all kinds of weird optical illusions by putting somebody in a big, paint all the walls white, paint the floor white, paint the ceiling white, make the room as plain as possible and put something in the middle of it and they can't tell what's going on. They can have a hard time figuring out what's going on. People can lose track of what's up and down even. You, know, you, know, you need things around you to tell what's going on. Okay, so let's make this negative three, negative three, negative three. Oh, what did I do wrong? It's still not. Like, I didn't save it. Remember, you really should do a build, build clean all the time. Delete your class file so that you, know, you, you, uh, you don't run the old version. Oh. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's a good distance from the camera. Okay, so now, this is actually not a great way to draw the animation because we're going to okay we're going to see in a minute that this is not a good way. What I want to do now is uh, change the rotation. Now, now we have the simplest rotation. We're we're just rotating around the origin. Now let's try to do the rotation around one corner. Now that's actually in this file here. There's here's the explanation of how to rotate around a point. Okay, so. Yeah. Like what is the distance which a camera can see? Like, for that certain point, it disappears. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's in these cord. It's see these four numbers. The first number is the angle of view. Tunnel vision like this versus very wide view. So the first number is called the field of view. 
how wide your view is. It's an angle. The second number is the aspect ratio of the camera. You know, is it square film or wide pixel film? This is how far, this is the camera sees things only that far away from it. Yeah, you know, if you're less than this far away from the camera, you're not visible. And this is how far the camera sees. So when things get more than 20 units away from the camera, they go off the back end and they're disappearing. Now, real cameras don't do that. Real cameras see forever. But open GL camera, the idea is that if you've got something moving far, far away from the camera, at some point, it's just one pixel. Why should you bother computing that one pixel? You know, the, like in the case of a camera, it, you know, there's no computation involved. But in the case of a graphic system, when something's the size of one pixel, it's kind of dumb to be spending CPU time on it. So we tend to chop off things and just say, if something is farther than this unit here, now this was pretty, this was two, this thing should be like 200, not 20. And so, you know, right now it chops off, the, the triangle is still real big and it fell off the back of the, of the camera. So usually you make this thing quite pretty big, a couple hundred. But the idea is you don't want it to be infinite like a real camera, because then when a model is real far away, it's only one or two pixels and you just don't want to spend CPU time on computing. Oh, it's at this pixel here. You know, if you can imagine a spaceship flying away from you. At some point, it's one pixel. You don't really care what pixel that spaceship is at. It's just going to be one pixel. So you chop it off and it no longer renders anymore. Okay, so it's uh, front and back angle of view and the aspect ratio of the view. What's the film look like? Is it panoramic film, square film? Or you know, essentially, is it like this or like this? That's an aspect ratio. Yeah, that's, but that's, that, that's what it's called. But aspect ratio is a number. Excuse me. Yeah, this is, uh, no, no, but that doesn't tell you if it's like this or like this. Yeah, that's, that's see, this aspect ratio, I'm trying to remember if this is greater than one or less than one. This one is less, no, this one's greater than one. This one's less than one. This is aspect ratio is less than one. This is aspect ratio is greater than one. And it's, so 16, yeah, you need to know if it's like this or like this. Same math, see, this is the same rectangle. So this is reciprocal of that one. As aspect ratios, they're reciprocals of each other. This one's greater than one. This one's less than one. Okay, so there are reciprocals. We'll talk about that kind of stuff later on. But that's what, this, now this is one, so I'm, I'm making a square pitch. Okay, like, uh, oh, I did the wrong. I took that square and I squashed it. And now it's actually like this, but the triangle squashed into it. So the triangle stretched it vertically. So what I did, it's, it's the aspect ratio is two, which means it looks like this. But that means that triangle squashed inside there. Now make the aspect ratio a half. Now the aspect ratio is like this. The triangle is gonna be smashed down this way. See, he's like, he said, now I didn't change the shape of the window to match the aspect ratio of the camera. So now I've got a mismatch between my camera and my, uh, my window, but essentially the camera looks like this. So the camera's taken the triangle and squashed it down this way and stretched it out. But my window is still the same window. So I'm losing part of the triangle, but the triangle has been stretched out this way. So this is aspect ratio less than one. This is aspect ratio greater than one. And if the aspect ratio is one, it doesn't matter if you do this or this, but nobody makes square cell phones. As far as I know, no one's ever made a square cell phone. You know? And we call this portrait mode, we call this landscape mode, but you know, the, so portrait mode is larger than one, landscape mode is less than one. Okay. 
for simple graphics, we tend to use an aspect ratio just of one. Okay, so one is a good aspect ratio for basic graphics. All right, now, I wanna start playing around with rotating in different ways. We've got the simple rotation now. We're rotating around the origin. Now let's try to do one of the more complicated rotations. Here's my triangle. I wanna rotate around that point there. I want the triangle to spin around like you know, that point's fixed and the triangle spins around that way. Okay, the trick is that I can only rotate around here. So what I'm gonna do is a three-step process. Step one will be move this triangle to there. Step two will be to rotate the triangle. Then step three will be to move it back where we want it to be. Okay. Translate, rotate, translate back. So three steps, translate, rotate, translate. Now, I wrote a formula for that in here. Okay, here's how the, here's how we're, here's how the formula look, works. Let me read it, make sure. This is the point A, B, and it's also the point C, D in the formula. Because I, I could, after I get this back to the origin, and then I rotate, I could move it anywhere I want. So I could rotate it some other point. So I get, in the formulas there, I've got A, B being the point you want to rotate around in the picture, and, they, and C, D is the point you want to rotate around in space. In this example, A, B, and C, D are the same. So in the example we're doing right now, the formula looks like this. So this is the point A, B. So if I translate this way, what am I translating by? This is A, B, go this way. Harry? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, you know, think of it, think of it as an arbitrary point. Suppose I just even just say, think of it more general. Here's a point A, B. And I got something there that I wanted to rotate around the origin. What do you do to get this guy over here? So what do you translate by? No, if you translate by AB, you go out that way. So minus AB. See, to get this guy down here, you have to translate by negative A, the opposite of A and the opposite of B. That's this bottom one. Now, why is it the bottom one? Okay. This, this is, it, it's got to do with what we're doing over here. Here's what the formula is gonna look like. Call this vector V. What do I want to do to V? First, I want to translate him to there. Then after he's back there, I want to rotate him. Then after he's over there, I want to translate him back. But now I've got two translations. Which one's which? Okay. This one is to translate him that way. So that's the negative A, negative B. Then after I rotate, I put him back where he was. So that's the A, B, right? Now, notice the way it's written here, A, B is on the left, negative A, negative B is on the right. In OpenGL, you read left to right as top to bottom. And this is where people get really mixed up. Because of the way OpenGL works, First, the, the first matrix there is the one on the left here. Then the next one is multiplied on its right. Then the next one is multiplied on its right. So you read top to bottom from left to right. 
but you do them from right to left. You read them top to bottom, you write them from left to right, but when you give me the vector V, what do I do with it first? I do this to it. Then after I did this to them, I do that to the result. So I, I execute them from here out. Now you've seen this before. If I give you F of G of H of seven, what do you do first? Then what do you do? G of the reason, right. You work from inside out. That's, and that's what this is. This is the inside out. Now here, inside out is from bottom to top. The quirky thing is that code is inside on the bottom, outside on the top. That takes a little bit of getting used to. You're used to this. You execute this from inside out. You need to think of matrices as these formulas and then inside out. The trick is that the bottom matrix in the code is the inside matrix. Java multiply, not Java, OpenGL multiplies matrices from left to right. So translate ABs on the left, then rotate by thetas on the right of it, then translate by negative AB is on the right of that. So that's read from left to right. You, know, you read it top to bottom from left to right. Okay. Right, so now, if I want, real quick, see if I can just type the form. If I should. Oops. Okay. okay, here's those rotations. Let me just copy them into our, our one over here. They have to be sequentially like that. Pardon me? They have to be placed sequentially. There should be nothing in between the command between the three steps. Say again? You cannot enter anything in between the three steps, right? Oh, yeah, you can, but not other matrices. Yeah, you, you can mix these up in any order you want. Yeah, the, the matrices don't have to be one after. You can, you can do a matrix, then change a color, then do a matrix, then change a color. Now, the color won't have anything to do with the matrices. But yeah, it's just a state machine. You can change state anytime you want. Let me see if, I don't know if I can get the thought. There's the, this is the first point. This is that, that, that point there. Okay. Let's just see if this works. I mean, it may not be quite ready yet. Ah, it worked. There it is. Okay. See, we're rotating around the red point with the tip. Okay. And then, okay, next week we'll do more elaborate ones. You know, what about, like, what if I wanted the red tip rotating at the origin? Or what if I wanted the red tip rotating where the blue tip started? So the blue tip is over here, but what if I wanted the red tip rotating around where the blue one was? I, or I can just make the red tip rotate around any point in the plane. So I can take the red trip of the triangle and put it anywhere in the plane and rotate around that. So I want to be able to take any point in my geometric object and rotate around any point in the plane. And the formula, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just this one formula here. Actually, I mean, not, it's, this three, it's this little block of code right here. That's the block of code, okay? So we'll quit there. Now, you know, this will be up on the, I'll fix up the, the, there's some of the codes goofed up in here. I'll fix that code up and put it back up on the website with the bugs taken out. Okay. Okay. Oh, have a nice vacation. Thank you. Recording. Let's see, where's the stop recording? It's right, uh, the one red. Yeah.